Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the brand new Rad Power Bikes Rad Runner 2, and I'm also going to be talking about the recently announced price increases on their electric bikes, so let's get into it. Before we get into the discussion, if you are looking to purchase a Rad Power Bike, I would really appreciate it if you use the link in the description before you make your purchase as it helps me continue to review electric bikes and make videos like this one. Thanks in advance. I will also put links to our holiday gift guide, our electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where I share all the deals on the electric bike brands that I follow. With that, let's talk about the Rad Runner 2 just announced last week from Rad Power Bikes. And I had some time to think about it. I wrote an article on ebikeescape.com, so you can check out that link in the description if you want to learn a little bit more about my thoughts. But what I thought I would do is talk about this bike. I commonly do videos like this when a new model is released. Now I also run the Rad Owners Forum at radowners.com. So I actually collected some thoughts from some forum members there to get a little bit of some outside perspective besides my perspective on the new Rad Runner. So let's get into the meat of it. Basically, Rad Power Bikes has increased the price from $12.99 to $14.99. And it's important to realize when the Rad Runner was first announced, the starting price was actually $11.99, and it was one of the more affordable options. And you still have the Rad Mission, which is currently priced at $9.99. That's their most affordable model. And then you had the Rad Runner, which was also one of their affordable models. Now, the important thing to remember is Rad Power Bikes also recently announced that they're increasing the price across their electric bikes. This is actually going to start on December 29th. So now is a great time to buy if you're looking at a Rad Power Bike. Again, link in the description if you want to help support the channel. Really appreciate that. But it remains to be seen just how much they're going to increase the price of their models. But given the timing of the Rad Runner being announced towards the end of 2021, I'm guessing that the price increase is already, quote, priced in to the Rad Runner 2 price. So I think that's something worth keeping in mind, especially as we talk about some of the other models around this price range. Now, we don't exactly know how much prices are going to increase, but perhaps it might be $200 across many of the models, given what we've seen here with the Rad Runner. Obviously, I have no inside information, so I will be very curious to hear that as well. And I went ahead and grabbed all the prices, so I will be doing a blog post on ebikeescape.com and sharing the increases and talking a little bit more about that once that is announced. Of course, that is due to the ongoing supply constraints, increasing costs, and Rad Power Bikes is not the only company increasing costs. I've ha seen it happen at so many electric bike brands. So definitely that price increase is something to keep in mind. I think a lot of people were disappointed that the Rad Runner had increased so much in price. Now let's talk about the changes because from what I saw, a lot of people were pretty disappointed with the changes. But again, I think that price increase is priced in, so we kind of need to take all of the updates with a grain of salt. There's really two different changes here. Now on the Rad Runner seat, they did add 15 millimeters of additional foam to increase comfort. Here's a closer look at their upgraded saddle. Now this is one of the common complaints that I saw about this electric bike. It wasn't across the board, but it is definitely something that I saw a lot of people go ahead and upgrade. So I will be very curious to see how this seat feels. I will be reviewing a Rad Runner too, so be sure to subscribe if you're new here and you wanna see that review. But 15 millimeters of padding, I feel like this means that Rad Power Bikes is really listening to their customers. Now, one of the important things, if you look at the seat, if you are looking to get a perhaps a more comfortable seat, you do also need to replace the seat post because that is a custom Rad Power Bikes seat post that works with this seat. So definitely going to add a little bit to the cost if you do decide to purchase an upgraded seat. Be sure to check out our electric bike accessories list. I have a list of some of the most popular ones that I see people purchase. Now, one of the really cool things about the saddle on the Rad Runner is it's made to work with the passenger pack. So you can actually lower that seat down and it's kind of seamless with that rear passenger pad. 
you can see that in this image here. You can see that brown seat. If you were to lower that a little bit, fits really nicely next to that passenger package. Now the other thing that they did change was the head tube angle. And I'll go ahead and look at the post that I wrote about the Rad Runner 2 because the difference is very slight. So if you look here, we have this nice little slider. So this is the Rad Runner 2. You can see it comes in black. And if I move the slider, you can see just the subtle changes with that saddle, that 15 millimeters of additional padding. And then if we go up to the head tube, you can see that the angle just changes slightly, brings those handlebars just a little bit more towards the rider for a more comfortable riding position. So that's going to be a pretty minor change that they decided to make. Now you can see on the Rad Power Bikes website, they say thanks to a more laid back head tube angle, that increases your stability. The rigid front fork provides ultimate control when cruising around town. And really those are the only two changes. There's some slight decal changes you can see here with the black model, they have kind of have black and gray and then there's a little bit of orange in the back there, but on the old Rad Runner 1, you can see they have more of the orange decals at the down tube as well as on the rear rack and they do continue to offer the forest green. I'm a huge fan of the green. I think it looks really sharp, but again, they went with the black lettering there, and then just a little bit of an orange decal towards the rear. So those are the two changes, and I feel like this might be an instance of, if it isn't broke, why fix it? I think Rad Power Bikes really nailed it with the first generation Rad Runner, and I think that might have to do with why we don't see a lot of updates on the Rad Runner 2 because this has become one of their more popular models. And one thing that I want to call out compared to other moped style electric bikes is of course the adjustability of the seat. That's something that really sets apart the Rad Runner from other moped style electric bikes in its class. A lot of companies have just a seat where it's at the height, no adjustability. And so when they came out with the Rad Runner, I thought it was a pretty ingenious idea to have that seat that goes up and down, but you can lower it to get right next to the passenger package. Now, if the Rad Runner is new to you, I thought I would call out some of the key specifications about the Rad Runner 2 because it is a little bit more unique compared to some of the other models. Of course, you have a more versatile electric bike because you can add so many accessories to it. I'll just play this clip here. You can see all of the accessories that you can put on the Rad Runner 2, and that really makes it unique. And you can really set this electric bike up for exactly how you plan to ride it. They are using an LED display which is only also found on the Rad Mission. So that's something to keep in mind. All the other models at this point use LCD displays. Now this is something that I wish they would have upgraded with the Rad Runner 2 is just put that LCD display on. Again, we'll see where the price falls with all the other models. But given you can buy some of their other electric bikes for cheaper now that have the LCD display, I was a little bit disappointed on that. It does add some additional functionality. You can see your speed. It's just a little bit more user friendly. Of course, you can upgrade that if you'd like. We do have the single speed drivetrain. That was something that was also unique to the Rad Runner that came out. Of course, the Rad Mission is also a single speed. So definitely something to keep in mind as well. And we don't see fenders on the Rad Runner. That's something that I wanted to call out because they do come on a lot of the other models. But you still get the large 14 amp hour battery, the 750 watt peak motor. And apparently on the EU model, you also get PVC fenders. So I thought that was worth uh, calling out. One of the other things that I wanted to touch on, I think this is going to be a common question from many people shopping for the Rad Runner, they kind of like that moped style, they like the accessibility of the bike. They're going to be asking, or you might be asking, should I buy the Rad Runner 2 or should I buy the Rad Runner Plus? So as I record this on December 20th, 2021, the Rad Runner Plus is currently priced at $17.99, and again, we have the Rad Runner 2 at $14.99. So we got a $300 difference there. So what do you get for that $300? The main things, in my opinion, are going to be the seven-speed drivetrain as well as the suspension fork. Of course, that seven-speed derailleur is going to come in handy if you 
plan to take your electric bike up hills or you live in a hilly area and the suspension fork is no doubt going to soak up the bumps along the way. So those are two of the main ones, but you also get full fenders, a passenger package, you get the LCD display that I talked about and you get the premium headlight, which looks cooler, but in my opinion, is only slightly superior to the one that comes standard. I actually think the standard light is pretty good. Now, on the other hand, you still technically have that thinner seat on the Rad Runner Plus. I assume when they refresh the Rad Runner Plus, they will put that new seat with 15 millimeters of padding on the Rad Runner Plus. And you also get the passenger package. That's the rear seat, the pegs, as well as the plastic protector there in the rear. Let's take a closer look at the comparison of these two electric bikes, the Rad Runner 2 versus the Rad Runner Plus. You can see that passenger package there. And you can see the front fork there, just how different that is. So the way I view the comparison of these two electric bikes, it's awesome that you get the front suspension. It's awesome that you get the rear derailleur. And then some of those other accessories are just kind of icing on the cake, depending, for instance, if you're gonna ride in the rain or you're gonna hold a passenger. I think if you're going to use those and leverage some of those extras, then I think the Rad Runner Plus is definitely the way to go. But keep in mind, we still don't know if and how much the Rad Runner Plus will go up in price at the end of the month. Now I talked about all of the accessories that you can put on the new Rad Runner and I thought I would point out these passenger bars. I believe these are new with the Rad Runner. Not exactly sure, the Rad Runner isn't a bike that I've paid super close attention to and of course I haven't reviewed it, but they do offer these passenger bars for $79 and then of course you can buy the passenger package for $100. So despite that the prices are likely going to change from the ones that you see now, I thought I would just share where the Rad Runner fits into the lineup currently. There it is at $14.99, you have the Rad Rover 6 Plus at $2,000, you have the Rad City Plus at $17.99, the Rad Wagon 4 at $1,900. Now this is where I think it gets a little bit interesting and this is something that was brought up on the forum. There's a forum member that was saying, I don't see why you would buy the Rad Runner over the Rad Mini because the Rad Mini is currently priced at $12.99. Now these are their foldable models. They do have the step-through variation, which I have tested out. A huge fan of that. I think if you're looking for an accessible electric bike, I love the low step. So definitely check out the step through variation. And if you prefer, they do have a high step version here in black. That's the Rad Mini version four. Now, before I talk a little bit more about the Rad Mini, I just wanted to call out the fact that Rad Power Bikes announced a new electric bike with the same battery that is found on a lot of their other models. Now, of course, that's great news for owners like myself and other owners on the forum because these shark style batteries are going to be available for years to come. So Rad Power Bikes has their newer models, their plus models with that more sleeker looking semi-integrated battery, but it seems they are still sticking with the shark battery on some of their models. So I think that's a sign of things to come as they update some of their lower models or more entry level models, if you will. All right, so now let's take a little look at the Rad Mini step through here. So for the current price of $12.99, again, this might increase to perhaps $14.99, just like the Rad Runner. But if you're watching this before the end of 2021, maybe this might help you if you're looking for a little bit better of a deal. So one of the great things with the Rad Mini, while you don't have a rear rack, and that's certainly something to keep in mind when you're comparing it to the Rad Runner, you do get the LCD display on the Rad Mini, and you also get front and rear fenders, and those were the two things that was called out on the forum. So my advice to you, if you're looking at the Rad Runner and you don't need the extra cargo capability, definitely check out the Rad Mini. Even if you added a rear rack, it's currently going to be priced lower than the Rad Runner. Of course, if you want a more moped style electric bike, the Rad Runner is definitely still a good option in my opinion. 
And keep in mind the extra benefit with the Rad Mini is that you can fold it, you can put it in a big tote, and that makes it very easy to put it in most vehicles. That's something I've talked about here on this channel with many of these foldable electric bikes. A lot of people who go RVing are definitely purchasing bikes like the Rad Mini. So I hope this video was helpful if you're looking at the Rad Runner 2. I still think it's a great electric bike. It's definitely differentiated in the market. As consumers, it's never nice to see prices increase, but that's kind of the state of electric bikes and many other things in the world we live in today. And I'll be very curious what happens with the other models here in a couple weeks. Again, if you are looking to purchase a Rad Power Bike, I'd really appreciate it if you use the link in the description prior to making your purchase. It's a free and easy way to help support eBike Escape and makes videos like this one possible. And also, I would love to hear what you think about the Rad Runner 2 in the comment section below and maybe what you think of the price increases and what's kind of happening in the electric bike space. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.